So what, what can we do with these? So the usual operators there, um, two, two um, stars for exponentialization. We've got the usual set of log logical um, operators here. We can have conditionals, so we can have an if, and then we can have an and, an or, a not, an xor um, to do conditionals. We can have the full set of hyperbolic functions, mathematical functions here. So these are your things like your um, absolute values, your, your C-like functions, where you can find the ceiling above something or the floor below a number. You've got some logs, some max and mins, um, mod, so we can do modular arithmetic. Um, we can round something, square roots, um, truncate it. We've got the standard trig. So all of these so far are not particularly new, but this is the exciting one as well. We can work with vectors. So no longer when we're doing things and want to create a vector, do we have to do everything with components? Or if we've got a vector and we want its magnitude, we can directly get that. So we can do dot and cross products. We can um, get the direction of a vector. We can get the absolute value later on, the magnitude. We can set up a vector as three expressions, where in this we would give each separate units. Or if we've got a common unit, we can use this for entry option where we give the three uh, components of the vector and then the common unit. Or we can give a unit vector. So we'll see some examples of that in the demo. Um, we've got the usual type of um, variables that we wanna do. So we've got things like um, current time, time step, time step size, current iteration. And then we've got um, a whole load of variables where we can actually um, go in here and use um, a variable, which you can either use this short form or its full form. So position is a vector with the three components you'd expect. So is velocity, but we can use x, y, z, u, v, w. And then things like time and that have a have a simple um, abbreviation, iteration, temperature, pressure, mass fraction, etc. So um, it's easy to grab stuff in. You've got a lot of stuff here as well. So even things like all the face areas and and variables that you might want to get in here to work with, you can get in. Um, you've got a standard list of scientific constants, so the usual set that you might want for setting anything up in your expressions. So let's um, let's quickly have a look at a, an example here. If we want to um, do a one seventh power law for turbulence, then we can go ahead and do that. So we can go in here and say a new expression. We can set our U max. We can set our R, our radial component, which is the square root of X squared plus Z squared on this particular inlet um, there. We can give its maximum value. Although when you do the maximum radius here, we could actually have, have been smarter and done the maximum value of, of say x on that face and so we wouldn't need to change this number if the pipe diameter changed um, then we can also then actually construct the expression and then when we want to set the velocity here you'll see that both u max and the inlet velocity that we've created show up so we can we can just choose the one at the bottom and it will automatically load, and then this is what we'll get. So once we've initialized as well, we can go down and plot this on the, in the actual geometry, um, not just the expression, but also plot the velocity and make sure you know it's sitting there. At the moment, 
these are not coordinate system based like in CFX, but that's coming. Um, so having much more flexibility with local coordinate systems is, um, is definitely on its way. So here's a few um, useful ones that are going to come up time and time again, being able to compute the area. And you'll notice if it's a whole load of things at once, a volume, a heat source, um, what else is particularly interested in here? Area weighted average over multiple faces all in one go. Conditionals. Um, and then we've got a couple of um, a couple of different uh, velocity profiles here that we've set up. So when we're doing this, we're typically um, creating them here and getting a list of them formed as we work our way down. So we'd like to be able to manage that. And so there's some tools in here that we can use to manage our name selections. So we can click on there and bring up a, a manager. And so once we've got that, we've got all sorts of things pop up here. Um, we, can, we can select an expression and get its details. So that's what it is. There's, there's no description of this one entered. Uh, it's not an input or output parameter. It's a real. It's a single value. It's not a constant. It's not constant. It's not constant value there. Uh, it's used in inlet one. If we hit compute at the bottom of this, out into the console will pop a little um, evaluation of this. If we pick up multiple ones, it will actually do multiple computes and list them. Um, yeah, here we go. So um, we can get um, uh, listings here and get this into a list and have a look and see what it's what each is. We can do things here with the usual selectors. Um, to select things if we want to do that, want to list them or if we want to copy one or whatever. Um, there's also an important um, pair of tools here, which um, reciprocal tools. So um, what, that, what that allows us to do is to import and export. So we've got those two options, import from file, export to file. It's a tab separated file. So um, what that gives us is along the top row, we've got a description of whether uh, the various components of, of, the, of the file and then uh, the various bits of it. So a name, definition, a description if it exists, if not, a parameter ID, a parameter name, whether it's an input parameter or an output parameter. So um, we've got that format there, and we're just they're just tabs in between. So we can actually go and edit in here if we want, and then re-import. But just be careful to make sure you keep your quotation marks balanced. Uh, things can be copied to clipboard and then paste into another session. So you can do a copy to clipboard, and then you can paste it into another session of Fluent that's open. Um, so that just is a one-off paste. The other gives you a file that you've got for reference. Now, once you've got an expression that resolves to a field as opposed to just a number, um, you will see that under our tab of, of, of um, selections, the very first one now is expression. So as soon as you've got an expression, you can plot it. So this is called local temperature deviation. And what it is, is the temperature minus the mass flow average of the temperature at the outlet. So you could think of this as your um, variation about the, the mean. 
and you can now identify where you've got an excess temperature and where you haven't and you know what the range of values are so it's great that you can plot these directly no need to create any user defined memories or anything they're they're basically available in the list evaluated on demand um, and you can straight away have a look and see what the results are so if we can do this um, with them we can also obviously do reductions of these we've seen so that means we can also monitor them in expressions sorry in in um in reports so we can monitor reports um that are an expression so um we can go in and directly do a report definition now there's all sorts of predefined ones that are really useful but if we want to do one which is our own particular expression we click on expression we can choose one from the expression editor the list and in it will go into the report and we can start then monitoring it straight away so you don't have to um, create them via this surface report or volume report functionality you can have them already um, already created in um, you can have them already created in um, an expression and then use them straight away as as a report for those of you who write um, TUI scripts then how do we do that we can actually um, we can actually um, use an expression in there either for example by putting the full thing in or just the name and doing it in quotes so um, we can create these at the beginning of a script we can also read in a file so if we've got a file of standard expressions that we want to use across our scripts we don't need to do um, use TUI commands to create every one of those expressions each time we can actually have a file with them in import that file into fluent and then whenever we want them we just address them as needed in, in boundary conditions and things so what's um, what's going on here well we have this very powerful expression language based on Python which is um, now possible to do quite a lot of things with in Fluent. So it's very powerful for setting up boundary conditions, sources, post processing, etc. And um, that um, it's not as fully implemented as CFX yet. So we can't do everything that you could do in CFX in terms of places to use expressions, in terms of the capability of expressions. I think um, we've exceeded that because we've got vectors. I only showed you the most commonly used functions in that, but if you're an acoustics person thinking, oh, but I use the Bessel function in CFX, well, actually you can use that in Fluent as well. So why am I doing this webinar? Well, firstly, I realized that there were quite a lot of people who weren't so familiar with the expressions and I ran a few in-house ones for companies and they found it very beneficial but the other reason is that I'm really promoting now um, transferring your work from CFX to Fluent there are so many benefits in terms of new models uh, numerics parallelization uh, workflows particularly with the um, meshing templates and how you can just flow through the workflow that if you're a cfx user and you're not using really advanced turbo and i mean advanced turbo i don't mean doing a fan i mean if you're using anything like a blade row model then yes stay with cfx but if not it's definitely time to be thinking about um, moving your models to fluent to get some of the benefits and um, we're always happy to talk to you. You can you can raise it with support. You can contact me directly, uh, and we'll um, help you with that process. 